Today is the day. I think my starter is finally ready to start making some dough. So that's what I'm gonna do this morning. Yesterday I felt like it needed just one more feed. So I fed it, put it in a new cup, and then rose. It did not rise as much as I would have liked, but we're gonna try. Before I get going with the sourdough, I'm gonna make some muffins real quick before my kids wake up. So we're gonna whip those up. So I just remembered that I forgot I don't have butter. So hopefully they still turn out okay. It's okay. But yeah, we ate it. Cody and cakes are my favorite for making them pancakes. Okay, so we're gonna take one, two, and three. Okay, there you go. Okay, and squeeze. Good. Squeeze. Oh, wow. Bake me a cake, guys. Got the cake, Make some bread. Let's make some bread. So we need olive oil. So we zeroed out the scale. No, it's not numbered. We're doing 50 grams of our starter. Whoa. 25 grams of olive oil. And mark it to go. <laughs> 21, 23. Put, can you, okay, you can put it on the scale. You guys get to toss it in. So Maverick, oh, Maverick. Okay, now. Can you hand me Riker's Baba? Okay, can you? That's what you can move you to the table. You want to sit in? Yeah, and my baby. Mm, mommy will mix this. Okay, yep. And then we're gonna turn it up. <laughs> There's a good amount left. We'll just take that out, feed that, have it ready for tomorrow. So when I'm making bread or bagels or whatever, I use bread flour, but whenever I'm feeding, I use all purpose flour. Some people use bread flour to feed theirs. At everybody's different. You just have to figure out what works for you. I don't know why I forgot this before, but when I was doing my sourdough starter in the past, I would do starter and then water, mix that together and then add flour. And it seemed to work really well. I have been doing the opposite the last couple of days. So I did starter, flour, then water and mix it all together. And it's just not perfect. It's not where I want it to be. I think it's good enough to start our dough but it could definitely be better. So I'm gonna try and do this because I know it worked this way in the past. Okay, let me... I feel like sourdough is just one of those things that you have to figure out what works for you because so many people do it differently. And I am not kidding, I tried seven, at least seven different times to make my starter in the past and I almost gave up, but I tried every which way. There we go, today's starter. I always just leave mine out, but if you are like, I'm not gonna make bread or anything with the sourdough starter for another week, put it in the fridge and then it'll last, I think for a long time. And then you take it out onto room temperature and then feed it a couple hours before you're gonna use it. We have to go get some parts for Bob that he needs, a little muffin snack for the road.
All right, you guys ready to go? We made it home. Now we gotta go check on our dough. Since it's been a while since I've made sourdough bread, I forgot that you actually do the stretch and folds about every 30 minutes and then you let it rise for a longer period of time. So this may not turn out, but we're gonna try. Been here for a couple of hours now for stretch and folds. Now I'm just gonna do them and then let it rise for longer. I just stretch it out like this, fold it into itself. Ball it back up, and then we're actually gonna trace for this. Okay. We'll set the timer for 30 minutes, and then do that again for about eight times. I'm about to do my sixth stretch and fold. I have about two more left. This is what it looks like right now. So it continues to rise a little bit. This benefit to the stretch and fold is that it gets light and airy and the perfect consistency. When all of my stretch and folds are done, I'm gonna take the dough, put it in a loaf pan and let that rise overnight. And then in the morning, we will bake it off. 